Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, and uh, I've done earlier videos on uh, Land Rover restorations and so on, and uh, this is another installment, and here's some of the progress uh, which we've made um, from the last video. So I'll uh, turn this camera around and I'll just show you some of the individual, individual pieces that we've done. Okay, so starting with the chassis, this is a uh, Series 2 chassis that dates from 1961. It's the same as a Series 2A chassis. Um, this one had significant work done to the front horns where the bumper mounts, and that has been uh, reconstructed. Um, it had uh, some uh, rust around the, uh, the, the one aperture for the PTO which was corrected. You can see it's a little bit uh, a little bit chewed up in there, but still uh, but still reasonably solid for the uh, steering relay. And the uh, horns are now in good shape. Um, we had a couple stress cracks that were welded in. Um, there was no real rust to the outriggers, which can happen. Uh, and then the bottom of the cross members as well were good. Okay, so the main, the main area of rust with uh, series 2A's and Series 2's, well I guess all the Rover Series 1 as well as this rear cross member. And you can see this area in here gets, uh, it'll, it'll get filled up with dirt and grime. So most of that is renewed and that you can see that it has been competently patched. Basically the rear cross member has been, um, has been uh, rebuilt. Uh, so the car was uh, taken down, it would have, uh, you know, originally it would have looked like one of these rovers, it's stripped down uh, to the bare frame. And uh, next step is it goes in for galvanizing. Um, and uh, you could just paint it, but uh, we're gonna galvanize it. This is the Series 2 engine, which, uh, sorry about the a spring here, so it's a bit moist, which we just pulled out of the car. Uh, the Series 2 engines are different from the 2A engines, even though they're both two and a quarter. So the Series 2 started with a two liter IOE engine, carried over from the Series 1s. Uh, at that time, the station wagons got the new 2.25 liter engine and the 88s, sorry, the 109 station wagons got the 2.25 liter engine and the 88 uh, inch cars got the uh, 2 liter. Then they came out with the new 2.25 liter, that's this. However, when they went to the 2A, which was in uh, later 1961, then uh, it's still a 2.25 liter, uh, but it's a different engine, okay? So it's uh, there's some parts that are shared, but not all of them. Um, we did the bulkheads, and uh, uh, you can see the work that was done in the footwells on these cars, uh, and generally all those are usually rusted out. Even if they look okay, when you get in there, uh, you usually find rust, so that's all been redone. redone. Um, there were holes drilled in it for various reasons. That's all been... Um, filled in and so forth and uh, we actually did two uh, different bulkheads um, differing a couple years apart there's very minor differences between them um, one's from a 64 and one's from a 60 okay so this one you can see uh, we put in the new floor plans and the new and the new sort of swage line the, the strengthening ribs that go in there so that's all new uh, these pieces uh, covering uh, the front of the bell housing those are and sandblast. That was actually an NOS piece that we found. And we did. Okay, so we've got that. Um, the rest of these pieces were all sandblasted. That you're looking at the capstan plate on the front. Uh, these are splash guards, two sets of steel splash guards. They don't last very long. They're inside the uh, the uh, front fenders. Uh, those are engine mounts there. Those uh, those square brackets. Um, you can see a couple cappings for the doors, and uh, and these ones right there are uh, that is for the um, uh, underneath the doors. Uh, we had we have a, a, a grill panel um, and the grill, so that was all uh, sandblasted. It was in excellent shape. It didn't need any welding. One of the few pieces that didn't. This is the battery box and the uh, air cleaner. Um, those. Rectangular pieces are the uh, brackets for holding the bulkhead up and the steering box. Uh, we've got a heat shield in the engine. We have an NOS front bumper. Um, we've got the uh, bonnet, uh, which has been um, uh, lightly sandblasted and cleaned up uh, here. And then that's the inner support. 
So if you don't take that off, there's going to be corrosion between the, the bumper support, uh, or sorry, the, the bonnet support and the front hood. So you got to take it off. You got to drill all the rivets out, sandblast that. So that piece then is ready for galvanizing or paint. I think we'll galvanize it and then put it back. Uh, now we have some floors and uh, seat box covers um, uh, down here. You can see those. And then this is the seat box, that intersection there, which can be a battery box on some models, but isn't. But regardless, they all have the well for it. Um, that is in steel and rusts badly, of course, because it's uh, open to the elements. And, uh, and then water drains in there and sits there and rusts it, okay? And then it usually takes out the side too. And so that has all been then rebuilt, okay? So that is a lot of work that goes into that, rebuilding it. And so that is ready for, um, that is ready for coating. Um, we looked around for doors. We had one good door, uh, which is here with uh, good aluminum. It required just a bit of minor work on it. Uh, and then, but, the, but we didn't have the, uh, I guess that is the uh, driver's side door, I suppose. Uh, they just take a bigger beating and we didn't find one. So that is reskinned. Uh, if we look on the inside on this one, you can see that the metal frame needed some repair. There's a little bit of sand there, um, uh, but it turned out okay. So this one was actually in decent shape. This one we had to completely disassemble and rebuild with new metal and reskin it. Not an easy, not an easy job. Uh, and then we've got the door tops again, and you can see that uh, you know that they've got a little bit of pitting in there from rust that's where the weather strip is so you know you got to take it all apart and blast it as well uh, for whatever reason we have two passenger uh, ones and one driver one okay so this uh well we have the rear body to do next so i'm going to take the rear body from this car or that's the plan anyway because it's actually relatively straight on the inside and then we'll do that up. And with that and the tailgate piece, um, that will uh, comprise uh, virtually all the exterior panels on the car and the body and uh, so on. Uh, and you can see that, you know, when, when you take these things apart, there's like lots of parts. Um, and uh, they, you know, you've got to all, you got to disassemble the whole thing down to the, down to every nut and bolt. I mean, if you want to get out all the corrosion and all the electrolytic corrosion from the aluminum and the steel and all the rusty metal and take it apart and sandblast it all and repair it all and then either galvanize, powder coat, paint, electroplate, whatever you're doing to it, then uh, replate all the fasteners, um, then get new rivets, then rivet the whole thing back together again. and. Uh, there's probably a misconception that because a rover is so simple that you know it's easy to do and, and it is it is easy in the sense that you can unbolt it um, but make no mistake that, that there's lots of work here this this, this, this takes lots of time uh, to do and uh, uh, to do uh, to do properly okay so uh, with that I just hope that helps just explain what goes on when you restore a old Land Rover and we still haven't got into the engine gearbox and axles. That's the easy part. It's the, it's the frame and the bulkhead and the, and the aluminum that's the hard part. So I, I, it doesn't make sense to, to do an engine and then let it sit there for five years before you figure the rest out. It makes sense to just tackle the hard bits. And here are some parts uh, uh, bolted, well, loosely bolted together and it goes back in the trailer. And so you can see the galvanized bumper and the front uh, grill support, uh, which didn't have any rust damage at all, like I said. The, uh, the uh, battery uh, and uh, air cleaner bracket. You can see the front of the bulkhead with some of the repairs uh, that have been done. And the back of the new um, floorboards uh, that are in there uh, around the front. And there's a seat box. I can't remember where I put that one that part for the tunnel, but I have it. And uh, there's the top of the bulkhead uh, there and the seat box. There's some additional pieces that go around these panels for the seat belt. So anyway, that's what it looks like.
kind of starting to look like a, like a Land Rover. Of course, the rear box is the is the um, is the last piece, um, and then uh, of course you, you know to put the doors on you need the brackets and so forth. But uh, anyway, there you go. I'm starting to look like an actual Land Rover. Thank you very much, Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada.